Good evening, everybody. You're looking at the officials for this one. Denny Morrell, the referee Ron Finn, Swede Knox are the linesmen. The two prime candidates for the Conn Smythe Trophy are ready to go. Mike Vernon for the Calgary Flames. Down at the other end. Patrick Waugh for the Montreal Canadiens. Both have been marvelous over the past five weeks. Well, the cup is on the line tonight. Will it be Calgary's cup to take home? Or do we all go back to Calgary for game seven? A jammed house, the Montreal Forum. Capacity crowd, they were telling me Two tickets on the street before this game tonight, Harry and Dick. You could have them for about $700 Canadian. How many did you buy? <laughs> I got enough for you, <laughs> Harry, and me. <laughs> and you know the price we have to pay to get in. There's a bit of a problem with the ice down there. Guy Pichet sang the national anthem, but nobody heard him. The ovation I have never, Harry, known the forum. Uh, in the playoffs this year, they picked it up toward the end. But they started with a, the ovation as soon as he started singing. And you couldn't hear, basically, hear a word that he sang. We have another ice problem down on the Canadians' end of the rink. Well, there is an interesting story as Harry Crisp has Lanny McDonald wearing the C in the lineup. And should the Flames win tonight, it will be his thrill, of course, to accept the Stanley Cup from League President John Ziegler, who is also here in his uniform, dark blue suit and blue tie. Well, a lot of fans across Canada will be happy Lanny's playing and has the opportunity to hoist that mug and parade it around this rink. But they are a long way away from that privilege, and it will be a stiff assignment to knock the Montreal Canadiens out of the playoffs in Montreal. We're set to go. Natras and McCown are on the defense for Calgary. As you look at the stats of the top linesman, Ron Finn, who's working the lines tonight, Closing in on more games than any other official working lines in the National Hockey League. Well, this one is underway. Natras at the blue line, put a shot in, and Ganey starting out with Carbonell. He takes the pass. Here's a chance for the high shot. Keen went a little too high. The Calgary Flames, Gilmore, Patterson, Mullen, they shoot it in. Chalios back there, takes a bump. Canadians, Carbonell again to center ice. Up over the line, and here is Ludwig. He and Chelios bump, but Chelios takes the puck. Keen trying to get loose in there. He was stopped. Back of the net on the other side. Now coming back to Chelios. He missed fire right in front of the net. Oh, Vernon makes one big stop, and he's going to be a penalty. The Canadians come out hard and heavy in the first minute of this hockey game, and the Flames get the first penalty. Well, the Jump. The Montreal Canadiens got the message from Coach Pat Burns. Let's start this game at 7.30, not at quarter to eight. And Terry Chris knew this was gonna happen. He told me last night, it's the first time in his hockey career he got no sleep the night before a game. He said, every time I looked at the ceiling of my hotel room, I saw a replay I didn't like. And that may have been one of the ones he was looking at last night. Now Joe Mullen, who will likely win the Lady Bing Trophy for not getting many penalties in the long, long regular season. He's off at 54 seconds, hooking Bob Ganey. Bobby Smith with Naslin, Cortnell, Robinson and Chalios for the Canadians on this first power play of the game. Smith near the blue line with Robinson, goes along the boards to Naslin, to Robinson again. He takes a look for Chalios. He takes the shot, knocked down by Vernon. Naslin is going to keep it in. It's now cleared down the ice by Merzen. Calgary Flames making changes. All the way back. That's Naslin. His pass to Smith. He can't handle it cleanly. Patterson, a penalty killer with Gilmore, gets it back in his own zone. And McKenna shoots it down the ice. 120 left in the penalty. The Mullen of Calgary. And the Canadians start back. Chalios again, shoots it from center. In it goes, and Naslin tried to pick it up. Merzen was there, Cortnell took a bump, Merzen gets a chance to move it out, and he does. He ripped it on the boards and got it up as far as Robinson. He was at the line and coming back. Robinson trying to get away from Gilmore and can't do it. 54 seconds left in the penalty. The Flames make changes again. 
and here is Riche. Through the middle, Riche trying to do it himself, going in, centered it now. And it's Neuendijk skating back. Neuendijk comes to center ice, dropped it back to his own line, Ramage to Neuendijk, and he fired it in. 30 seconds left in the penalty. Canadians have had the only two shots of the game so far. Riche has to slap it in now. Here comes Corson looking for it. The goaltender Vernon stopped it. It's cleared out again. Swoboda got it back against Neuendijk. Swoboda takes the pass from Green. Goes up to the Calgary line and shoots it in. Only 10 seconds left on the penalty. Patterson is bumped, but the Flames are killing this penalty now. They shoot it down the ice. Well, the Calgary penalty killing has been superb. They will not let the puck carrier have a second look. Confronted very quickly in either zone. Fleury is coming in, dropping it back. McClellan trying to put a shot in. The Canadians get out. The net though, in behind the play, has been knocked off the magnets. Mark Hunter and Patrick Waugh were down on the ice. And the net went flying. Tonight, scratches for the Flames. Tim Hunter and Jim Poplinski, the players who have been in action in this series. Not tonight. Priakin and, of course, Suter. And no change for Montreal. Gilchrist out. Lemieux in. He's on the right side as they get set for this faceoff. Flurry with McClellan and Mark Hunter for Calgary. And this is Natras. McCown is the other defenseman. Natras shoots it in. Watt tipped it into the corner for Green. Scrooglin with Lemieux. They don't get very far. McClellan tried to go in. Was met at the line by Green. And Swoboda flattened. Green takes it. McCown intercepts the pass. Poked it up. Inside the Montreal line, Scrooglin. The feed the other forward for the Canadians, went after his man, didn't get a chance to pick it up. Here's McDonald's shot. On his first turn, he went right in and took a shot. McDonald is in there again, he slammed into Swoboda. Lemieux back of the net, and he was hit by Lanny McDonald. Now it's Swoboda. There's McDonald again. Didn't get a chance to hit his man this time. McBee is coming in, a great play by Natras. Canadians keep it in. Now Otto scoops it away and he passes off. Herdina coming in with McDonald and Otto. And the shot is gloved by Patrick Waugh and he holds it. The bearded Rick Natras, a former Canadian who told me during this series after only playing 38 regular season games, well, it took a while for me to convince them, but here I am. And he made a pretty good defensive play right here on Mike McPhee, who tried to cut around him and move in toward the net from the left wing. I think Natras has been very steady, and Harry, you pointed out, especially in a penalty-killing role, he's played awfully well for the Flames. He sure has. He cemented a job next year, I'll tell you that, and his was in doubt for part of this year. Desjardins with Robinson on the Montreal defense, and he lost it to Patterson. Patterson trying to get a pass back to the line. Keen. Couldn't pick it up against Gilmore. Desjardins bumping Patterson. They hold it on the board. Patterson got it loose, and Robinson was in front of the net to clear it. They went off Keen, stick it out. Now off Keen again, and over the boards. At the Montreal bench, there is no score. And they played four minutes and 33 seconds of the opening period in game six. Smith, Naslin, Courtnall for the Canadians, Neuendijk. Thrown out, Roberts comes in. Lube is the right winger on the line for the Calgary Flames. Ludwig takes the pass on a skate and hammers one in wide of the net. It bounced right through the crease. Vernon looked around and it just missed him. Went right through his skates all the way to center. Smith going in and was knocked down. The Crimin holding him now. And they get a whistle for a face off of the Calgary zone. Mike Vernon got a scare off that funny bounce from the backboards and he was saying thank goodness didn't hit me in the foot. Matt Snazzle and Hook and Lube are lined up against each other on this ship. This game is being televised in Sweden tonight. Oh, there it is. Mike just slipped at the right foot in time. There's Chelios. He was bumped. Roberts takes the puck for Calgary. Ramage slides a pass ahead to Hook and Lube out to center. Neuendijk. Neuendijk coming in. Played it on the wing. McCrimmon, the defenseman, was up there to clear it in. Luke tried to center. There's going to be a penalty called now with the Flames forcing the Canadians. And it's going to be a Montreal penalty. 
It looks to me, Harry, like maybe the best thing that happened to the Flames in the first five minutes of this hockey game was the penalty taken by Mullen because the Canadians came out stomping. The crowd was in an uproar. They had two shots in the first 35 seconds of the game. Then once they started to kill the penalty to Mullen, the crowd was quiet. The Canadians were quiet because Calgary did such a good job. And now we got a penalty call on Chelios. So the Flames have their first power play chance. Well, I wonder if it'll be just as good news for Montreal to have to kill a penalty off. One of the differences in this series has been the productivity of the Calgary power play versus Montreal's lethargic power play. Otto has Gilmore there with him. At the line is Ramage and the big shooter, McKinnis. Mullen back to Ramage. Ramage shot. What a save. It went off into the left side. McKinnis keeps it in. Al McKinnis played it up back of the net. Here comes Mullen to pick it up. Otto is in there with Gilmore. Gilmore looking back to the line. Now he gets in front, put a pass in there, and it went by Mullen. Mullen whipped it back to Ramage on the line. He kept it in. Carbonell with a chance to clear it now, and he does, slapping it down the ice. Right for the netminder, Vernon. 125 left in the Montreal penalty. Here's Ramage coming to center ice with a pass to Gilmore on his skate. In the loop, broken up by Scoogland. He got it back out, and Ramage turns with McKinnis. McKinnis back to Ramage. And again, Loop. He stick handle through. Loop gets set with a low shot that just missed. McKinnis kept it in, but the Canadians are on it quickly. Ludwig, and he shoots it down the ice. 55 seconds left in the penalty. Calgary did a great job killing their penalty. Canadians now are hanging on while well, they're shorthanded. Neuendijk is coming in. Neuendijk drops it back. Ramage had to throw it into the corner. And Robinson shoots it away. 40 seconds left in the penalty. And Kinnis takes it to center. Put a high one in. That's deflected into the crowd. Larry Robinson, he knows a lot about playoffs. For the number of games he's played. He said the playoffs are tough on the players mentally, more so than physically. And interestingly enough, he said the key is to learn how to get down after the games and get your rest. There are so many distractions that it's very hard to keep your focus and let nothing else enter your life. And he's been able to do that, or he wouldn't have celebrated six Stanley Cup victories. And this is his seventh final series. It's well documented that he has never lost in a final series. And I don't think until tonight has he ever played in a final series game where the Canadians faced elimination. 34 seconds left in the penalty to Chris Chelios of the Montreal Canadiens. Ludwig winds up. He put it back into the Calgary zone. 25 seconds left on this penalty. And the Flames get set to come back up ice. And it's Al McKinnis through center. It's tipped in by Gilmore. And that'll go high over the glass. And they'll bring it out over the line for the next face off with only 18 seconds left in the penalty. Gentlemen, we're in a bit of history tonight. Uh, here at the Montreal Forum. Now, Joel Otto and the Calgary Flames have never played hockey as late as the 25th of May. Their previous was May 24th. But the Flames are only 17 years old. The Montreal Forum is 65 years old, and this is the latest date that a game has ever been played in this building. Joel Otto's got a bad wrist. He did not practice today. And if you recall, he couldn't take that critical draw with the goalie out in game five. And I know they're worried about whether he can take face-offs tonight. Vernon stops. This one with only eight seconds left on the penalty. It's just about over now. Chelios is standing up and ready to come back out. Now he is on the ice. So the Canadians have killed a penalty. Just like the Flames did earlier when Mullen was in the box. He's in there now offside. There have not been too many officials from other NHL teams attending this series, but one is tonight. David Paul, who worked under Cliff Fletcher and obviously learned a lot from one of the best and has been the general manager of the Washington Capitals for the past several seasons. He still hasn't smiled since his team was knocked <laughs> out so early this spring. Flurry, Mark Hunter, and McClellan for the Flames. Riche, Walter, Corson, the Canadian front line, and they're coming to center. Riche poked it in. It bounced right to Vernon. Walter goes in, takes a bump and the puck. Trying to get it back for Swoboda. There's Corson. He couldn't handle it cleanly. Green moving in quickly to slap it in behind the net. Corson is up on it. He centered it. Nobody there. And Fleury comes out with McClellan. Long pass goes in. 
Mark Hunter went after it. He took a bump from Swoboda. Corson hit by McClellan, but Richet gets it out. Tried to hit Walter, the high pass. He couldn't control. Fleury shoots it in. The Flames and Canadians make changes. Waugh steps behind the net to stop it. Now Corson at center. Corson shoots it in. Grimmin was there. Ramage, far side for Roberts. He's moving up quickly. Roberts centered it right into a dike. And he was bumped in time. Naslin got back and rolled it in behind the net. Another penalty coming up. Montreal's going to get it. I think it's Matt Naslin for interference. Boy, with Mullen and Naslin going to the box and early in this game, that's not a very good advertisement for the finals of the Lady Bing Trophy. And the Flames get a power play. There's been two power plays tonight, four minutes worth of time, two minutes for each team, and there has not been a shot on goal on either power play. In fact, there hasn't been a shot on goal in the game after the 32nd mark or so, and the Canadians have two quick ones. Ah, where is Naslin in all of this? Oh, he interferes with Rick Green there. There it is, right here. Ah, there it is. Put Neuendijk into the back of the net. The later the series goes, the fewer new wrinkles the penalty killing units have to put up within the opposition's power plays. And it gets tougher to make those plays to get yourself a good scoring chance. And when you have two teams that are very good at penalty killing in the first place, you get what we have in this series. Not a lot of power play opportunities. Otto, Gilmore, Mullen, Ravage and McInnes. Canadians control on the face-off, and Brian Waller kills a few seconds before putting a shot in for Vernon. McInnes takes over, starts back, coming to the line. McInnes through center, and he put that one a little too high. And it's into the crowd, another Stanley Cup souvenir. Well, he had a shot with somebody in the penalty box. They gave Ryan Waller credit for a shot that won from the center ice. Well, there's the fellow whose big shot has been such a big item in the Calgary Flames play in this playoff, and of course before. The story today about Patrick Roy says, I'm not afraid of McKinnis' shot. And I dare say he isn't. And then he said at the other end of that conversation, but we can't let him wind up and shoot like he's right. shooting. So it's like, come on, guys, don't let him wind up and shoot. I don't think he's afraid of it, but he doesn't want to hear it go by him. Carboneau won the draw back to Chelios. Ludwig dropped it to Chelios. He gets a little room and decides to turn away from Mullen. Now to Walter, and he decides he's better get rid of it and shoots it down the ice. McKinnis was watching it closely. 120 left in the penalty. And here's Carbono stealing one, but he couldn't get a shot. McKinnis covered up in time. Flames start back out. McKinnis bumped it center. Ryan Walter now left it there, and Strudlin couldn't hold on to it. McKinnis takes it. Backs up a bit near his own line. McKinnis feeds it up for Lou, but he was stopped by Strudlin. Strudlin going in after McKinnis. Now Ludwig. He missed it. Lube is coming in there. Hunter is in front. Here's Lube going right in. Oh, he came close with the backhander. Now McKinnis is winding up, shooting. That went off the leg of McPhee. McPhee clears it. 35 seconds left in the penalty. Strudlin going up after Ramey. McKinnis turning for Calgary and coming back down. Across center, stick heading in neatly. McKinnis made the move though up the blue line and the Flames were offside. The Flames upset with Brian Strudlin. First, Hogan Lube threw a shoulder into him after the whistle went, and now Mark Hunter and Strudlin. Once they and they're going to go, I think, both of them. Once they get those games going back to Sweden, Lube and Nazem ah. are going to be nasty boys tonight. I think Hunter and Scrudlin are going to get doubles here. They carried on their argument well after the whistle. You see Naslin in the penalty box there with Scrudlin. He has 27 seconds left in his penalty. Mark Hunter takes his place. The Calgary side. You know, 18 times, or 22 times the series has gone. 3-2 for one of the teams. And 18 of those times, the team that is ahead 3-2 has won that final series to win the cup. The two exceptions, Detroit twice, Toronto once, and Montreal once in 1971. Victor, remember that against Chicago. McKinnis to Lube, Lube going in. He fell, and 
Carbonell gets it up to Ganey. One man is back. It's Al McKinnis. Ganey coming in. McKinnis trying to play him. Ganey couldn't get the shot. McKinnis stayed with him all the way. Nice effort by Ganey. Equally fine effort by Al McKinnis of the Calgary Flames. Here's Carbonell. He's coming in there. Carbonell to Ganey. Ganey had his stick lifted by McClellan. And here's a penalty against the Calgary Flames being called. So Merzen is going off. The Flames' Dana Merzen gets two minutes for tripping at 10.26 on Bob Ganey, who had a pretty good shift. And finally, uh, at the end of the shift, ended up drawing the penalty to Merzen. Not exactly a vicious foul by any stretch of the imagination, but Denny Morrell seems to be doing here in this first period what Terry Fraser did in Calgary a couple of nights ago, and let's call it very close to get the message across early. Canadian second power play now. Walter, Riche, Corson, Robinson, Swoboda. Robinson will have to come back. And he's back there with Peter Swoboda. Robinson going the other way. Starts up to the line at center. Now puts on the brakes and gives it to Swoboda. He shoots it in out of the net. Vernon, he takes a look for an opening. Put it high. Couldn't find the opening. Robinson stopped it. Atris is getting back quickly. He took a bump from Walter. Here's Swoboda. Swoboda put it into the corner for Walter to Corson. Corson hangs on to it. Now put it back in the net. Riche tried to hit Walter with a pass. That close quarters in there in that corner. The Canadians. Robinson now put a shot in. Swoboda gets it. He rolled it up in front of the net. Vernon tapped it high. And Riche left it there. Here's Swoboda out the line. Now to Robinson. He found on it. Gilmore shoots it down the ice. One minute left in the version penalty. Flames change. So do the Canadians. But Robinson still on there. Starts the play with Swoboda. He's moving up over the line. Swoboda to Bobby Smith. Nice save by Vernon by the shot by Smith. A scramble in front of the net. And here's Smith again. Pressure by the Canadians now. Smith shot right in front. Vernon makes it save as he was in the right spot and then moved out quickly as he saw Naslin test him. Good goaltending by Mike Vernon. Vernon had to make two stops, two good saves. The last one from about six feet away on the puck that was rolling. Naslin just flicked it. And it hit Vernon right in that big flaming C crest that he wears on the front of his shirt. And as usual, it looks like the goalies are gonna steal the thunder again in game six. Vernon, great again. He has been since April month. Came upon us for the Calgary Flames. Desjardins testing Vernon. He missed the net with that shot. Patterson scooped at it. Now up goes McCown. He tried to feed it in for Otto. He had a step on Desjardins, but he couldn't find the puck. Desjardins with Cortnell moving now. Here's Cortnell, his escape. Chelios had to back up against Hoke and Lube. Chelios turning away from Lube and going through the middle to hook it up across the line. Burning out. He didn't see Cortnell come the other side. They turn that now, shoots! Rebound! And it's Burson out of the penalty box and clearing it. Naslin got back, but Burson is moving up there with Newendike. Burson coming in, round the net. Person now comes out front, put a shot in, and Patrick Wall took the backhander, juggled it, and he held on to it. Dana Person out of the penalty box, right place, right time. He knows what it's like this time of year in Montreal. He was with Hartford when they lost in game seven in an Adams Division final series in 86, but he made a super move there at the side of the net on Courtnall, and Patrick Waugh had to make his second stop of the game. 6-2 the shots in favor of Montreal. Good play by Person. Flurry. With Mark Hunter and McClellan. Canadians Green stepping away from a crowd now. Gives it to Mike McPhee. He shoots. Vernon stopped that. Canadians hopping on the rebound. Lemieux back to the net. McPhee giving chase in the corner. Knocked down. Gloved it away. Canadian Swoboda couldn't keep it in. Mark Hunter is going up to watch him. Swoboda had to go back to the defenseman Green. Now to Swoboda again. To Green. Out on the boards is McPhee. 
He turns, put the pass in too far for Lemieux. And McClellan over center. He lifts a high one into the left of Patrick Raw. The Calgary Flames make changes. Nearing the 14 minute mark of the first period, no score. Green coming to center, shoots one in. Flames, Lanny McDonald dumped it ahead. Otto on the play, gets it up to Herdina. Horson didn't see it, Burson hopping on it. Burson going in, trying to center it, he took a hit. Herdina in there, trying to dig it out. Here's Horson chasing it. On the move is Lemieux, he didn't see him. And the Flames, Otto brings it back in. He gets in position. Now Corson intercepted in behind. Got it out, Flames shoot it in again. Six minutes left to the period. Ludwig back there, going to the boards for Chalios. And he just lifted one out into the center ice area. Dumped back in by Jamie McCown. Here's Mullen on the puck. Tried to center it. Went off the leg for Ryan Walter. He put one up near the blue line. The Flames keep it in there. Cowan at the point. Now Ludwig. Parson, he is stopped. Close checking now. The period winds down. Five and a half minutes left. Shots are 7-2. Montreal. And the Flames are forechecking the Canadians again. This has been very successful for the Calgary Flames in this series. It's center. Gilmore was there, but covered. Orson doesn't get too far. Against Natras. Hold it on the boards. Gilmore has it pinched there. Nobody is going to move the puck for Gilmore, so they call it. Well, welcome to Hockey Night around the world. Uh, besides the regular telecast to Canada and the United States, 11 countries are carrying this game tonight. I understand in each case the commentary is being provided in the studio back in the native land. And, of course, a lot of interest in Sweden with the likes of Hook and Lube and Mats Nesbitt. Russia's not there, Coley, and they're the country that's supposed to be most interested in the National League. The Flames will be training next September. They're just not telling anybody. <laughs> Desjardins behind the net for the Montreal Canadiens. 4.50 remaining in the period. Bobby Smith is starting out. Smith, it's a nice pass through the middle, but Hortnell couldn't hang on to it. Naslin does. He poked it up on the boards, and Neuendijk skates in front of the net. Up to the left wing. Roberts got it back to Lube, reaching for it. Lube dumped it in. Raw out of the net. Roberts went in to try to take it away from him. Comes between the primitive Ramage back to the Calgary line. Lube again. Speeds it into the corner. Desjardins back. Side steps Roberts hit. Now Robinson. Lube chasing him. Flurry is up there also for Calgary. Bobby Smith calmly takes it away and skates down the center with Naslin coming in. Naslin and Portnall with Smith. Naslin tried to hit Smith with the pass. It's blocked. And again, the talent lifts one into center ice. Kubota, the green turning away from Mark Hunter. Green backhands it in. Vernon has to play it up on the boards. It bounced off the glass. It nearly came back in front of the net. Swoboda has to turn and go in because Mark Hunter is coming after him. He hit him, knocked him to the ice, but the Canadians get the puck out. Scrudlin skating through center with McPhee on the wing. Back to Scrudlin. The shot up by Vernon. The goaltender hangs on to it again with 328 left in this opening period. Canadians from center ice shooting the puck in. Ganey had to get back on side, allowing Gilmore to move it up to Natras. He plays one into the right of the Montreal net. Patterson bumping with Green. In front of the goal was Swoboda. He goes in back of the net now. And here's Ganey dropping it back. Green gives it to Carbono. Guy Carbono comes in with a shot, a rising shot glove by Vernon. He made a good play. Getting it on the boards for Mullen. Mullen coming in with Herdina. Mullen tried to put it through for Herdina. It didn't work. Canadians Haney back. He's up over the line. Haney was bumped by McCown, who fell. Haney put a skate in on it. So did McCown. They cannot hold it there. It comes loose. Herdina just pushed it by Chelios into center ice. Shoots it back into the Calgary zone. Two and a half minutes left of the opening period. In game six, Otto coming up with it. McDonald missed it, nearly got it again. McDonald is still fighting for it in there against Jalios. Jalios going around the net. McDonald is not trying. The Canadians bring the puck down to center. Jalios coming in. Wait, wait, 
Ricci! And his shot missed with the short side. He was set up perfectly. McDonald racing back for Calgary now. McDonald getting in position, put it in front of the net. Kellios was back, covering in front of Patrick Roy. Out against McDonald. Pass to Riche. Can't handle it cleanly. Gives it to Chelios. He does. But Neuendijk was there on Chelios. He had to go back to Ludwig with 140 left in the period. Canadians make changes and Chelios scooped it from his own line into the Calgary zone. Corson going after Big Burson and he pounds it in on the boards. Neuendijk comes in there. Crowd of players battling for it in the corner to the left of Mike Vernon. And they get a whistle. Again, Russ Cortnell there must tell you that the mind games began early in this one. He might have a fight here. Wilson Cortnell. He called off and found a lack of interest. It's Corson and Roberts. Harry, what's going on here? The Montreal defense had waited as long as they could on the blue line before they ran in because the faceoff will come outside after Denny Morrell sorts this mess out. Remember, we have not had a fight here in the final series, and this is probably as close as we've come. Russ Cortnell is superstitious and likes to be the last man off the ice and shoot the puck down into the other team's net. And he got away from it in the Philadelphia series. Burns told him not to do it. But tonight he was out there all by himself, and Rick Wamsley refused to leave the goal crease. And he stood, and he stood, and he stood, and finally Cortnell left the ice, and Wamsley took the puck and shot it at the Canadian's net. One of the fellows coming out to clean the ice, stopped him, got his big ovation, and we've still got something going here. Corson's gone. There's a minute and a half to go in the period. You know, the word around the National League is don't upset Big Bird. And he may be getting upset at the handling, manhandling that number five Merzen's giving him. And this may not be the best thing for the Montreal Canadiens, or for the Calgary Flames, to get guys like Smith and Robinson, two level-headed guys, more into this game than they are. Doug Reisbrow, who is no, was no stranger to that sort of scene in his very excellent career in both Montreal and Calgary. All the penalties are being announced now by Joe Mucha. All of this at the 18.30 mark of this still scoreless first period. And here's how it all began. In the corner, Corson jumped at Merson, and Neuendijk jumped at Cortnell, and away they went. And the Montreal defenseman patiently stood at the blue line, couldn't wait, and came in and joined it. And with 1.20 left, Robinson taps one down at center ice, and then Ganey put it back to him. Play called. Faceoff will be near the Canadian line. Well, if this were a heavyweight fight, we'd say that the, team, the boxers are still feeling one another out. This is, of course, as we know, round six of a possible seven-rounder. First goal is vital. Montreal are nine and one when they scored, and five and nothing for them. Calgary's 12 and one, four and one away. So that first goal is the almighty first step to victory. Now they have decided the play was called with a high stick making contact to drop it near center ice. That's what they've done. McKinnis feeds it back. Merzen trying to shoot one in. Here's Patterson with a chance. He scores! Patterson stopping the puck at the line. He went in to score on Raw and the Calgary Flames. Draw first blood and lead one to nothing. Perry, it's been a story of the series for both teams, but in particular Calgary. And we see some Flames fans here. Chelios knocks the puck down right to Patterson, and he doesn't miss. Merzen shooting the puck in. Chelios is kind of trying to get out of the way and catch it. It came right to Patterson, who made a nice shot. An underrated player, Colin Patterson. Watch him put this one in from about 18 feet out. I think Patrick Waugh thought he should have had that one. Came awfully quickly in with just kind of a surprise chance. Good play by Patterson was that he shot it right away. He didn't try to make a play. He just had it and shot it. 18.51, the time of the goal. Merzen and McKinnis get assists on that goal. Less than a minute to play in the period now. Mullen is coming up for Calgary. Here's Gilmore, but that play is offside with 52 seconds left in the period. The goal coming on Calgary's third shot of the period. Calgary, I think their strategy was, let's be sure to get out of the first period in good shape. 
and take this crowd and the adrenaline that you know is flowing through the Montreal team with their backs against the wall. Now they've succeeded in doing that with 52 seconds to go and got a little bonus from Colin Patterson. They've also succeeded in keeping the Canadians away from what I think is termed quality scoring chances. Furness made some stops off Naslin, and there was one I can recall right away, but he hasn't had the ooh and ahs with the saves he's made, so the Flames have again come up with that solid play inside their own blue line. Raw stopping one from center ice. Green to Lemieux to McPhee. McPhee from center. His shot is blocked. At the line, the play is called on the offside again on the skirmish set. Happened at 18.30 of the period. Roberts, Ramage, and Calgary, Smith, and Corson of the Canadians through minor penalties for roughing. Claude Lemieux, who has one goal this series and only five points in the playoffs, certainly way below production, although I thought he played a lot better in Calgary in game five than he did in game four. And Montreal played much better after they knew they had to go on the offense in Calgary. I wonder if that'll happen again tonight. Swoboda put a shot right on. Vernon had a little problem with it, but now McPhee got it loose. It's passed back to Swoboda. Lemieux tried to pick it up. McPhee is working hard again in there, and it rolls by Natris into the corner. 20 seconds left in the period. Natris got on his knees to clear it to Gilmore, and he got it out. Mullen stopped by Swoboda. Mullen stick goes flying into the Calgary bench. Whipped down the ice right to Netris, and that'll be icing with four seconds left in the period. Scrudlin shot the puck into the net after the whistle. Not a hard one, and got a warning from Denny Morrell. Morrell knows as well as anyone that those shots on goal after whistles can often cause a scene. Now McKinnis drew an assist on the Patterson goal. So, for Big Al, that's a point in 17 straight playoff games, which is a tremendous record. However, he won't have a chance to equal Brian Trotje's mark of 18 straight back in 1981, unless there's a game seven on Sunday in Calgary. There's Brian Scrooden. They need a little offense from his line. I know they're not known scorers, but to have the three of them get about two points between them, playing as much as they do, isn't the way to win the Stanley Cup. Otto will try to win it for McKinnis, who's right behind him now. Gilmore, a little to his right, and outside the circle with Mullen and Merzin. Four seconds left. The Canadians put it in behind the net, out of harm's way. And there's the siren to end the first period. Nine to four were the shots in favor of Montreal. Well, they had some territorial edge, but color the Canadians frustrated again by this little guy, Mike Vernon, in particular by the Flames defense, which kept them at bay, and by the opportunistic goal by Colin Patterson. Right place, right time, certainly, one nothing Flames. Thank you, Chris, and here we are for period number two, one to nothing, Calgary leading on the goal by Patterson at 1851. Merzen and McInnes assisted, you're looking down at the faceoff, and here's Chelios with Ludwig back in the Canadian zone. Ludwig gives it to Chelios to Ludwig again. Ganey, Keane, and Carboneau up front for Montreal. Gilmore, along with Patterson and Mullen for Calgary. McCown and Natris are the defensemen. Natris going behind the net for McCown. Patterson decides to come back. Patterson takes over, trying to skate away from Carboneau, gets it up for Gilmore. He checked Keane, but the puck rolled away from him. Ganey backhands it in. Vernon goes the other way. Carboneau was coming in. Gilmore starts back, gets to center. Carboneau and Gilmore go to the ice. Two teams making changes as it's cleared in. Burn it out again. McClellan is on the boards. Looking for some room and he comes to center ice. Big McClellan coming in. Mullen was going off. Puck nearly hit him. Canadians shoot it in. Flames were making changes. Murray going in there to run into Swoboda. Merzen through center ice. He had a good first period. Assisting on the goal and playing a solid defensive role for Calgary. Scrudland up to center. He has Lemieux on the right. Lemieux's shot. It goes in. Score! Vernon couldn't handle it. Involved 
involved in both goals. Calgary scored on a shoot-in. And watch how far out Lemieux is when he decides to shoot it. 57 feet, it handcuffed Mike Vernon. He doesn't know where it is. And by the time he finds it, it's over the red line. And the score is 1-1 as Montreal has awakened all the fans at the Forum. And there's that nice slow motion shot to show you how Vernon has lost it. You can see him flick his glove. He thought it was in his glove. But a couple of flicks told him it was in the net. At 123 of the period. So an early goal by the Canadians. And we're tied. Hardina comes in now for Calgary. He's doing a pretty good job back there. Gets it out front. Raw down and makes a solid save on a backhander. Canadians relieve the pressure by shooting it down the ice. The Kremen back. Lemieux comes in. Kremen touching the puck. And it is icing. The goal by the Canadians. Certainly our first look at Mike Vernon not stopping something that he should have perhaps in this series because he has played so well but there it is and we're tied 1-1 neither goalie's too proud of the way they yeah. left the first goal for either team in. Calgary on the faceoff get it up behind the Canadian net Swoboda comes back to help Green Swoboda likes to carry it he got it out over the line Herdina brings it back in took a shot tipped away Otto going after it. Svoboda is in there. Otto kicks it loose. McDonald was hit hard by Green. Really hit him hard. McDonald back on his feet, though, and looking for the puck. Verdina comes out. The play is being called. There's going to be a penalty. Harry McDonald of the Calgary Flames has been working feverishly in this hockey game, and here he is not rewarded. He gets a minor penalty. Well, those 36-year-old legs of Lanny's have been really pumping tonight. They're rested. He didn't play the last couple of games. Boy, his intensity tonight is at 110%. <laughs> but he'll have two minutes to cool it off. Now, here's McDonald getting socked by Rick Green. Now, you be the judge if that should have been an elbowing penalty or not, considering some of the calls that were made in the first period. And then Lanny, as they go back up ice, hangs on to Bobby Smith. And he's the guy who gets called for two minutes. Holding penalty, Patrick Wall. Gloved one from center ice and had some trouble with it. Goaltenders on pins and needles tonight. You can understand why. Calgary wanting to win the cup. Ball on the offside. And the Canadians want to go to seven. Well, well, Russ, Russ Cortnell, who is by far the fastest player on either team and has added some real speed to the Montreal team, his offensive skills have always been fairly apparent. And did you know that he leads his team in plus minus? He's never been accused of being a good defensive player, but that shows you what peer pressure does. The older teammates teach the younger ones how to play team defense. The Canadians are 0 for 2 on the power play in this game. Chalios, Robinson, Smith, Naslin, and the Cortinal. It's a pass to Naslin. Shoots a high one in, comes down to Smith. The version took it away from him. Trying to get it by Robinson. It's tipped away by Gilmore. Chalios back, ball enough to watch him. Robinson had to turn around and pick up that pass. Now he's trying to skate away with it. Not much room near center, so he tries Chalios. He picks his way in, shoots it in behind the net, burning out. Left it there. Robinson stopped it. Here's a setup for Cortnell, but it bounced away from him. McInnes fanned on it, trying to clear it. Smith got it back to Robinson. He feeds it into Naslin. Cortnell coming out front. Here's Chelios. He waited too long. Cortnell shot. Not much on it. He nearly misfired altogether. Canadians had some chances. Robinson, 38 seconds left in the penalty. Lemieux. Coming in, Burge is in there, lost his stick. Picked it up on his skate, Smith comes in to help, as does Mike McPhee. McPhee against Ramage. McPhee kicks it loose to Smith. Smith to Robinson, he put a shot in, it's tipped by McPhee and just missed. Lemieux lost it, and the Flames clear the zone with 15 seconds left in the penalty to Lanny McDonald. 1-1 tie here in the second. Canadians start back. Lemieux up to Scotland. Scrutland centered it, 
Here's a chance for Chelios. He steps in. Chelios coming in. Oh, the pass to Lemieux. He missed it. Penalty is over. And the Flames, four of them, get out. Up to center and coming in as Lube. Newendike centered it. McDonald scores! Andy McDonald! What a great pass by Joe Newendike. He had very little time at all on the three on two, but got it over quickly to McDonald. And McDonald showed you a 26 year old shot by a 36 year old man as he put it up and over Patrick Waugh like he did so many times for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and so rarely for Don Cherry's Colorado Rockies. Look he at this. I'll tell you one thing, he was just a touch behind the play when it headed up ice, and those legs of his were pumping, as we mentioned before. There's the good, quick release on the pass by Newendike, and Patrick was on his knees. McDonald waited. Roy made the move. McDonald fired it high. 2-1 Calgary. He just came out of the penalty box. 4.24 of the time of the Lanny McDonald goal, giving the Flames the lead again. And Chris did it before. He dressed Kablinski. He got an assist at the 38-second mark in game five, and now he dresses McDonald, and McDonald puts him ahead in game six. Four twenty-four. the time of the goal. McDonald from Newendike and Lube. McClellan taps it into the Montreal zone. Swoboda coming back. Corson over there. Here comes Fleury. Fleury pins him in on the boards. But Walter is there. He couldn't get it out. Natras takes his shot. That misses. Riche bumping with McCown. Fleury fighting forward against Walter. They go to the ice. Final players in the corner. Three of them down. Play is called. little testy again these players I need to see flurry he was in there Walter got upset with flurry gave him a little shot Walter then took one from behind was it McCullough or I'm not sure who it was and flurry just skated away he just let everybody else get involved for a while Ryan Walter does not get upset all that often he's a peaceful type normally solid hard nose but basically peaceful but right here he's upset Bob Cole with Dick Irvin and Harry Neal Ron McLean, Chris Cuthbert, and Don Cherry at the Forum. Ryan Walter with Mark Hunter in the penalty box at the Forum. Two to one, Calgary leading. 15 left in the second period. Calgary, Bill, Mark Hunter, Oak Cliff Fletcher, the general manager of the Calgary Flames, Responsible for a brassy but classy move today as he brought in the wives of the Flame players in hopes that they could share those girls, share the possible moment of glory with their husbands should they win this game. Rick Green and Swoboda are the defensemen for the Canadians who are trying to start the play. And it's Swoboda from center. That one in high, it comes down for Smith. He backhands it into the corner. Herdina was there, but Courtno on the other side saw it coming. And then he saw Herdina coming. Sidestepped him. Canadians, Courtno got it loose. Ramage picks it up off the boards. Courtno over there again. Svoboda dumped it at the side of the net, and Ramage lays it out as far as the line. It's tapped to center by Herdina. Green leads it ahead. Naslin is trying to find room to go in. Shoots it off the boards and goes after it. Naslin behind the net. It got by him. Hits Smith. And then the Flames come out. McCrimmon up to McDonald at center. And the Flames are going to make changes. During the six-minute mark of the second. It's tipped at center ice and down into the Calgary zone. They're going to call it icing. Thought it hit the Calgary player at center ice. However, it'll come back in the Montreal zone. That business with the wives, the Canadians did that in 86, same situation when they had a chance to clinch at Calgary. Now, has Cliff set the stage for the Canadians if there's a seventh game having to uh, arrange for the wives of the Montreal players to go to Calgary? I don't know. Now's getting some extra trips out of all of this. Well, the wives should certainly share in the 
great moment that yep. their husbands have of winning the cup. They had to put up with those yo-yos the whole winter. <laughs> McKinnis from center. David to Patterson. He shoots it in for Calgary. Gilmore is on there with Patterson and Mullen for the Flames. They're up four checking again. But Desjardins got loose to shoot it into the Calgary zone. Carbonell going after Mullen. Patterson gets it out. Goes all the way down the ice. Gilmore has a shot at it. Desjardins back and he made a good move to get a stick on the puck first. So that's icing against Calgary. Well, quite a first year in the Stanley Cup playoffs for... Get out of there. Gates at Gates at Lafave with in front of Pat Burns. We have all kinds of things to say about Pat Burns. Here's Bobby Smith intercepting. Ripped the shot. Vernon looked shaky as he grabbed it. He juggled it though, and then held on to it. It was a shot, and a chips tie. Well, these guys are getting a lot testier, Harry, than they were through the first five games at little incidents like this. Well, the mental strain of a playoff, remember now, these guys are playing in their eighth, well into their eighth week of playoff, almost every other night. And they're tired, they're sick of hockey, and yet we're seeing, although tonight may be an exception, some of the best hockey at the end of this grueling marathon called the NHL playoffs. And that is a real compliment to the athletic ability of the players on both teams. Morrell has come to the penalty box. Now this is where Corson comes in. Now watch Vernon, watch Corson's head. Bingo, right there. Now Gary Roberts gets upset. Vernon's drawn a penalty. A penalty against the goaltender, Mike Vernon, for roughing at 6.37 of the second period. I think Corson's going to get one too, Bob. Uh, unless Vernon got four minutes and Corson two, that two-minute penalty is going to have to come off the scoreboard. Well, you mentioned the length of the season. I'll get this May 25th business finished with. This equals the latest date the Canadians have ever played. Back in 1978, Mr. Bowman's Canadians played Mr. Cherry's Bruins at the Boston Garden in the final game of that Stanley Cup championship round. This is Calgary's 113th game, Montreal's 111th if you count the preseason game. 252 days ago, training camp started. So this has been a grueling march for the Stanley Cup final. And now we've got confusion here. You're right, Harry. They took the penalty against Vernon off the board. But you've got players in the box. Hunter and Walter are still there from their previous penalty. Roberts has gone to the box. Corson, but Morrell just skated quickly over to the penalty bench area. And now we've got quite a discussion going on at the timer's bench. Well, nobody in the building except possibly Morrell knows whether there's a power play ensuing. We know there are penalties, but we're not sure who got what. And there's the timer, making sure he gets it properly on his chart. Now, they put up the two minutes on the score clock against number 30 for Calgary, which of course is Vernon. And there has been no time posted for a Canadian player, which would lead us to believe that if this is the case, maybe Vernon through two minors, but we don't know yet. Well, Chris thinks that. He's only got four skaters out there, so he's anticipating that he's in the penalty killing situation. And uh, there's some confusion between the timers and the teams. But it's sorted out, and Montreal appears to have a power play. And Vernon getting the odd two minutes. Except for that last one with McDonald in the box, fans, Montreal fans, Harry might agree with that statement of yours. Montreal appears to have a power play. <laughs> They're on with five skaters as opposed to the four Calgary Flames inside the line. And from the faceoff, it's cleared out over the line. The announcement now. Roughing penalty to Vernon. So the Canadians on the power play. The center. 
Tip back in and Robinson and has to come back. And around the net is Cortnall. A pass to Riche. He's going up over the line, trying to stick handle to the net. Goes around the net. Now he finally falls down. And the Flames get it out and down the ice. If one of the doors on the end of the rink was open, Riche would be trying to beat the ushers on his rushes instead of passing the puck. Pass to Cardinal. He's up over the line. Cardinal gets set. Now he's moving up there to Chelios. He ripped that shot and went through Vernon but missed the net. Canadians keep it in. On the puck is McPhee. Bobby Smith is there. Smith gets it to McPhee. Oh, and a great save by Vernon. And he got another one. The first shot, though, was a beauty. And he stopped it. And then grabbed another weak shot and held it. Well, converting good scoring opportunities. He's going to end the season a little earlier than Pat Burns wanted because there was a beauty that McPhee had, but he couldn't beat this young fellow, Mike Vernon. Here it is. Pass from Smith. There's the shot. There's the stop. That reminds me of a big stop he made off McPhee to start the second period in game four when it was still nothing, nothing. And I thought that was the best, biggest save of the night in that game that the Flames went on to win. This one may stack up close to it when all is said and done. Well, Cortnall had a little chip shot, but he couldn't get it high enough. The penalties that were called, Vernon, a roughing penalty, Corson of the Canadians for roughing, and Roberts of Calgary for roughing. So, 48 seconds left on the power play for Montreal. Scrudlin, Lemieux, and McPhee with Chelio and Swoboda. Rudlin slides it back to Chelios. Chelios put a shot in there and hit Lemieux. Now he's after it, trying to drive it off into the crease. And the Flames recover and shoot it down the ice. It was in behind Vernon. He was over on one post and the puck rolling to the other one. Bill 2-1 to one, Calgary. Canadians, 25 seconds left on this power play and Gilmore breaks up the rush at his own line. Swoboda in. Flipped it into the corner. Burrs it back there. He took a hit and falls to the ice. Canadians, McPhee gets it out front. Lemieux fanned on it. Rolled into Gilmore. Chelios stopped it. He gave it away. Mullen is racing in for Calgary. Here he comes. And Svoboda got back with a great move. But the play is called now with a net off the magnets in behind Patrick Waugh. Svoboda might have saved a Calgary goal there. But Chris, Chris Chelios, I was going to say, Harry, had visions of goal one <laughs> on that one. You know, the Calgary coaching staff are convinced that Chelios and Svoboda, who have taken quite a pounding in the series leading up to the finals, are tired. And that's the reason that those two skilled offensive defensemen are having trouble getting into the rush. But Chelios shows some speed to get back and take Gilmore away and at least make it a one-on-one. -on -one. That's what, actually Mullen lost the puck, but Svoboda was right on his tail. The Norris Trophy winner, I think, don't you, Dick? With the season as a defenseman, Chris Chelios. No surprise if he does, he got the two top ones here tonight. McKinnis and Chelios, certainly. The teams are at full strength now. Calgary winning this draw. McCrimmon dumped it up to the corner. Bobby Smith bumped by Otto. McDonald going after it. McDonald takes a hit, couldn't find the puck, and in back of the net is Robinson to Desjardins. He mishandles it inside his own line. McDonald for the Flames kept it in. Desjardins forced back. Robinson met by McDonald, and McDonald bounces off Robinson and goes sliding to the boards. Here's Smith coming in, centered it, and Vernon got his stick out to intercept that pass. Flames have three players moving. McDonald from center. Look out, it bounced up high. Wah didn't see it. Came down in behind the net. Came off his blocker, went high. Bounced it back of the goal. Long pass on an open wing. Coming back forward is McCown. Mark Hunter is going to clear the zone. Here comes McClellan. He nearly got by Green. Flurry is coming in with a shot. 
That's deflected. Waugh looking one way. The puck went the other. Into the crowd over the glass. Down to his left. Lonnie McDonald, who's been a factor tonight, Dick. Here's 73 years worth of bones. <laughs> shaking in those two uniforms. And the guy with the longest bones is still standing. Loboda takes over in his own zone. A long pass to Corson down the left side on Natras. Natras playing Corson. Chases him into the corner and pins him on the boards. And Mark Hunter slides it down the ice. This is going to be ice and go as it goes all the way down the ice. Now Waugh decides he better come out and play it. McClellan steals it. Picks a backhander. Not much on it, but it missed the net. At the line, Natras winds up. He takes a drive. That's deflected. Rebound is there. Waugh down again. He hangs on to what is McClellan came close again. Waugh forces a face off in the Montreal zone. Right here, the Flames are about a half step ahead of the Canadians. They're beating them to the puck. And that was a pretty good chance. There's been a lot made over the fact that the Canadians have never lost the Stanley Cup in a deciding game in this building as we take a look here at the shot that comes in and hits Raw right on the pad and he hangs on. I think what Terry Crisp was saying to his guys is forget about that bit of tradition, fellas. Here's one for you. The last two times the Montreal Canadiens faced elimination in the playoffs, they were on home ice and they were eliminated. Last year by Boston, the year before that by Philadelphia. And as Guy Carboneau said, that's history, and that doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> and he's right. Roberts getting the puck on the draw, and he just plays it to the far corner. Ganey trying to clear the zone, got it as far as the line. It's kept in there by Lube. Ganey again got it out for Walter. He was hit. And the Flames now starting to take it to the Canadians. They're up by a goal, getting a little more physical again. But here is Carbonell. Across center in with a long shot. That just missed. Ends up on the mesh. In behind Vernon. Lube in the corner. Fake one way and smartly moves away from Ryan Walter. Hoke and Lube to center. Up over the line. Neuendijk coming in. Oh, and his shot just foiled in time. Neuendijk is knocked down and there's going to be a penalty to the Canadians. A slashing call. Neuendijk, who just made a fine effort to score, is knocked to the ice. He has been hurt. Well, what we have here is an injured Joe Neuendijk and a penalized Craig Ludwig. Bearcat Murray looking at Neuendijk, who went down very quickly and then left the ice very quickly, and Ludwig was quickly dispatched to the penalty box, slashing the call, and the Flames, who lead by one, have a chance here to do some real damage. We don't know whether the slash was what caused the damage to Neuendijk or whether he landed. There's the slash on his right hand. And he goes down quickly. And he, boy, he looks like he's in real pain on the bench. Flames, man advantage. And they'll have to drop it again. Out of position on that one. Here's Mr. Ziegler saying, those boys shouldn't hurt each other out there. This is the gentleman's game. Well, he'll get a chance to present that cup tonight or on Sunday. A little noisier presentation Sunday, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> yes. McKinnis to Ramage. You think it wouldn't be noisy in Calgary tonight if they win this game here in Montreal? Back to Mullen. Ramage winds up, shoots. It's deflected and just missed. Into the corner. Canadians trying to get the puck out. Can't do it. Mullen takes it. Back to the line. Ramage again. And Otto came close to tipping one toward the net. Walter now, he can't clear it. Flames power play. Inside the line, Gilmore to McKinnis. Ramage again, a shot. And the rebound is there. Homley played away by Robinson, right under the stick of Scootin. Down the ice, 120 left in the penalty. Ludwig in the box. The Flames lead by a goal. Not much to choose between these two teams. What a great series here in Green Game 6. The Flames a chance to finish it all. Canadians just trying to kill off this penalty now. McPhee put it back into the zone. 55 seconds left on the penalty. Okenlou comes to the line, skates to center. He's up over the Montreal blue line. Lube now stopped, hit hard by Robinson. 
He stays in and thrown, played it into the corner. Now Flurry back to the line. McKinnis can't shoot it. Flurry might. There's his shot. Rebound. And Waugh somehow stopped that. But the Flames power play giving Patrick Waugh two tests again. And he holds it. Big 27. Cleland had his rear end right in Waugh's face as that shot came from the side. A good hard shot by number 14, Flurry. The stop wasn't the tough thing. The tough thing was to know where that puck was going once it dropped to the ice. Clellan was unopposed in there and actually got himself a little too close to Patrick Waugh. And when he found the rebound, there was no angle. See McClellan all alone there. Now he looks for the puck. But it's in Waugh's feet, and McClellan goes down quickly, as you usually do when you park yourself in front of the opponent's net. <laughs> He's going to be pinned there. One. Well, he only got to the two. That puck got in behind Roy on the play, or McClellan made contact with it, no doubt about that. He made a good play. And Patrick Roy did a good job to hang in and keep it out. Calgary looking for their first power play goal in this hockey game, 35 seconds in which to get it on this penalty. 7.27 remaining in the period. Puck goes in behind the net, and here comes Gilmore looking for it. Walter stopped him. Mullen goes back, gives it to Gilmore. He looks back for McKinnis. He's open, so he gives it to him. Now Ramage, up to Gilmore, and he couldn't handle it. Chelios takes it, dumped it ahead, and the Canadians get it out to center. It bounced over the glass near penalty of the Canadians bench and the Flames bench with 12 seconds left in the penalty. As always, at Con Smythe guessing time, you seem to be concentrating on goaltenders or a defenseman in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but I don't know about this guy. Nine goals his last six road games, and I think that tells you a lot about the skills of Joey Muller. <sighs> That's Herdina, 17 for Calgary. Natris, number six. Up over the line, scoops it into the corner. Roberts comes in after Swoboda. Swoboda bumped by Roberts, allowing Lube to move on the puck. Out to McCown, that was intercepted. Ludwig is out of the penalty box. And it's Swoboda up with Strudlin. Strudlin shoots it in. Here comes Naslin on the other side. Naslin left it up the line for Swoboda. He just shoots it to the corner, and Scrooglin is going in there. In around the net, he centered it. Erdina was in front of the net to intercept. Erdina comes back out, and Naslin took the puck away from him and lost it. Lube in, couldn't get a shot, though. Roberts went after it. He's pinned on the boards. Erdina is back there. Erdina poked it loose. Now he tries to get it out front. Goes the other way. Natris coming up from the line, a shot. Here's McCow on a drive. That just missed. Now Natris on the other point, he kept it in. There's Mark Hunter behind the net. Mark Hunter bumped by Swoboda. Hunter stays with it and comes loose for Smith. He gives it to Green. Up to center is Green. In goes Courtnell, but he can't beat McCown to it. Vernon came out. Bobby Smith to Naslin, didn't work. And Fleury poked it ahead. Mark Hunter coming across center, going in on Robinson. Robinson hit him. Cordnell got all the way back and fell. Robinson trying to get it to Naslin. He went off balance. But Kremen shoots it back in for McClellan. McClellan left it for a ramage, and he just swept it off to the corner. Now McDonald and Robinson bump together again. This time, Robinson went flying. Robinson coming out for Montreal. Got away from McClellan and Naslin. Cordnell missed the pass. Bobby Smith carries on, but it's offside. Well, there's a guy in the Canadians, Harry, who has seen a lot and I think tonight has given a lot. I've been very impressed with Larry Robinson. Here's another and, guy. You know, <laughs> you, I think Larry's coming back as we look at it. I don't think there's much doubt about that. He'll play again. But you kind of have to wonder, is tonight the last are off for Lanny and for Bob Ganey? Long shot from center ice. Stopped by Vernon. Gilmore is turning for Calgary. He gives it to McCrimmon. The defenseman is moving up. 
McCrimmon slides it into the corner away from Chelios. Ludwig back there. Here's Gilmore. He doesn't see it. It comes to Ramage. His shot deflected. Miss. Mullen was close to that post. Could knock it down to old Keane coming back. In for Ganey. Ganey is covered, so Keane moves in. Carbonell was in front. He couldn't get the puck out to him. The Flames put it by Chelios all the way down to Patrick Waugh. He has to give it to Ludwig. The Flames make changes. 4.30 left to play in the second period. One goal separating these two. Calgary on top, 2-1. To Ludwig backs up. Now to Chelios. Stopped by Roberts. Carbonell takes the puck at center, and it's slapped into Waugh again. Ludwig back. Roberts chasing him. The pass to Chelios over his stick. He couldn't make contact. He has to back up again. The Flames are forechucking. The Canadians unable to get going, and the crowd getting restless. There's a pass down to McPhee. He tried to go in. Al McKenna stayed with him. Now, Hook and Lube back in. He's with Herdina. Lube gets in there. Gets set. Doesn't shoot it. Turning away to the boards. Now he feeds it off. Grudlin intercepted it. McPhee takes it. Comes out against Lube. Put a pass over that Merzen saw, and he just shoots it back in. Back is Swoboda. That is icing against the Calgary Flames. This program is copyrighted and is strictly for the private use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, redistribution, or exhibition in whole or in part without the express written consent of Molson Brewery and the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. They dropped the puck in, and Vernon had to kick it away. Patterson coming in. He took a bump on the boards. Canadians keep it in. Scrooglin lets one fly. Rebound! And Vernon grabbed it before McPhee could get a stick on it. And there could be a Calgary penalty on that play. Well, McPhee, uh, McPhee was dropped in front of the goal. Well, he tried to find the rebound, and I think that's the penalty, but there have been all kinds of skirmishes in here. They'd like to get somebody from the Canadians into the box, too. They got a shot at Lemieux, the that's way right. he's acting. And out of that mess, a hooking penalty comes. Rick Natchez celebrating a birthday today. So is Rick Wamsley. There's Natchez. He's giving the key a little birthday present there. Now, if you can get a hook out of that, <laughs> you've got more eyes than I have. Terry Chris was very upset that only one penalty and to his team as a result of that scramble. Canadians now 0 for 5 in the game. Make that 0 for 4 on the power play, and they are out of position, so they'll have to drop it again. No time elapsed. They didn't move the clock, so another face-off to the right of Vernon. 3.24 left in the period. Strudlin, McPhee, Lemieux, Robinson, Desjardins, Gilmore on the face-off for Calgary. Yes, Mullen. Penalty killing forward now for the Flames. Kinnison, Merzen. Merzen slapped at it. Robinson stopped it. Had to hurry a pass. Merzen again. And he cleared the zone. Now watch the Calgary penalty killing. They force the man with the puck wherever he is. They do not at all sit back in that box and let Montreal pass it around. Long pass going astray. Merzen shooting it down the ice again. 135 left on the penalty. Otto watching Robinson behind the net. A pass city crowd of 17,909. Want the Canadians to get something going. Well. In it goes. On the boards, McPhee. Back of the net. It's McPhee again. Hit the side of the net. Scoodlin trying to come out front. It slapped away behind Desjardins down the ice as he had pinched in. 110 left in the penalty. Fresh troops on for the Canadians. Riche, Corson, Walter skating out. Riche takes the pass, and Walter took it from him. Shoots it in for Corson on his skate. Gilmore is back there, dumping it for Burson. He'll get a chance to clear again. Stopped by Chelios, but then it bounced out over the line and Mullen shoots it down the ice. 43 seconds left in the penalty. Robinson coming out, gets to center. He played it in for Richet. Richet trying to go along the boards. Corson is there with him. 
Loop trying to knock it away from the Canadian player. Chelios winding up. Shot missing. Robinson lets it go and hit a leg. Bouncing wide. Morrison now feeds it in front. It's cleared down the ice. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Wall out to scoop it ahead to Chelios. Chelios coming back. He gave it away there. Gilmore nearly hopped in. But Swoboda recovered in time. Back for Keane. Keane is coming up there for Montreal. On a sharp angle now, stopping in the corner. Corson back at the net. Corson turning. Leaves it in there for Carbonell. He can't center it. Keane goes after it. Corson in front. He's tied up. Here's Chelios keeping it in. Chelios gets set. And he played it over to the far side, right under the stick of Gilmore. The penalty has been served. The Flames have killed it off. One minute left. In the period, two to one, boundary leading. Bob Gainey dropped it back. Swoboda shoots one from center ice. Burson on the boards, picks it up and lifts a high one out. He has been clearing the puck perfectly for the Calgary Flames. Indians backing up, looking a little shaky is Swoboda against Mark Hunter. Roberts bumped by Carbonell. They hold it on the boards and get a whistle for a faceoff in the Montreal zone. With only 33 seconds left in the period. And Chris Chelios, who rarely makes a bad pass, shows you what can happen. Fatigue often causes a short circuit between your brain and your hands or your brain and your legs. And Chris Chelios just gave that puck away, and you know you haven't seen him do that five times this season, and he's done it a couple of times tonight. Anderson in the first period. Lemieux tied it for Montreal here in the second. Lanny McDonald, 424 of this period. Is the margin they're talking about right now on the Calgary bench. And here among the crowd at the forum. Two to one, Calgary, 33 seconds to play in the period. Bill Moore poking into the corner it was Walter. Green to Scrudlin. Trapped by Mullen. Flames will stay close to every moving Canadian player now in the dying seconds of this period. Green back, 15 seconds left in the period. Green coming out with Walter, bumped by Gilmore. McKinnis at center, shooting it in. That'll do it. With only seven seconds remaining in the period, Ganey goes in behind the net, takes a quick look up at the clock, and then decides no time to move. He's right, the siren goes, ending period two. And we're ready for period number three. There is Denny Morrell, ready to start things. Gilmore will face Carbono on the faceoff, and we're underway. Calgary leading two to one. Shooting the puck in is Patterson. It bounces behind the net, comes out for Ludwig. Chelio slides it out, a pound shot, rebound. Gilmore couldn't reach it. He got it back, though. Carbono turning around, kicked it loose. Now he shoots it off the boards, down the ice, right to Vernon. Natras back. Riche watching him. Natras pass. It's knifed to center ice by Mullen. Chalios. He mishandled it. Had to go back again. Ludwig played it up through center. Merzen stopped it with his glove, with Naslin in behind him. Roberts falling to the ice. Calgary Flames changing as Smith comes in. Put a shot in wide of the net. Roberts gets the puck near the line. Stopped by Chelios. Neuendijk is there. Naslin went after him. Chelios took a crack at it, and it's centered. Now bounces on a stick back of the net. Bobby Smith comes up front, jamming it, and Vernon holding his skate on the post. The fine play again. Voda dashed in off the point, but Smith couldn't find him. 12 minutes, that's the kind of ice time this guy's been putting in. And when you do that every night, the 21 games in the spring in the National League, you've got to be wearing a little thin. And he's been on the wrong end of a number of crunching body shots. Starting with the first minute of his first playoff game when Kevin Deneen ran at him. And Cork have won. They both ended up in the penalty box, and it hasn't changed for Jaleo since. Calgary on the faceoff. Lemieux going after 
kicked it loose, comes out on the board. Now he takes his shot, he missed the net by a fair margin. Green kept it in, Crudeland and Lemieux back of the goal. Gilmore out fighting the two Canadians to get it out to Mullen. Mullen from center slides it in and the Flames are going to continue to make quick changes now in the third. Only one goal separating these two teams. As McBee comes in, Lemieux shot, he missed. Slapped back of the net, Ramage and Lemieux collide. Strudlin centered it, he slapped at it and hit the side of the net and out. Lube passing through, McCrimmon backhands the puck in on the net. Into the corner is Green against Roberts, Strudlin coming back. He has the pass on the other side, can't get going with it. Now Swoboda. Roberts covering Scrudland. He can't play it there, so he goes to Green. Now Scrudland just knifed it away, and McCrimmon tried to slam it back in, but it's Green getting it up the course, and he didn't do much with it. In behind the play, there will be penalties. Mark Hunter and Scrudland collided near the Canadiens' blue line. Almost went at it. For about 10 or 15 seconds, Mark Hunter of the Flames and Brian Scrudland of the Canadians tried to win the spot dance prize. As they hung on and hung on, the play went all the way up to the other end of the ice, and they just wouldn't let go one or the other. They're both gone for two minutes now. Barry, we haven't seen Joe Newendike since he left the ice with that injured right hand. He came back to Dick and played a half a shift, and he's never getting it retaped again. Here's McClellan coming in for Calgary. In back of the net, Lanny McDonald. McDonald got it loose, took a hit as he did, and Desjardins has the puck to get it to the line. That was kept it in, but now it's poked away, and McDonald shoots it in again. McDonald has the go-ahead goal in this game at 424 of the second period, his first goal in the playoffs. And what a big one it is right now. Canadians shoot it in. Nat was coming back. Horton all over him, but the Flames kept the puck out of the zone. Canadians unable to solve the Calgary Flames defensive alignment. Now it's in there for Corson. Oh, Riche was set up by Corson, and he missed the puck in front of the net. Riche with the best chance for Montreal. Now Corson again around the net. McCown stopped it. Mullen coming out up the center ice. Patterson is with him. Mullen goes in, trying to go around. He did, and he couldn't get a shot. He made a great move, though, going in around the defenseman in on top of Patrick Waugh. Jalios coming out, turns back, he sees Mullen, Mullen going off now. Keen, rink wide pass, going down the ice, McKinnis is back, icing was waved off, the Canadians are on it, there's Carboneau, Keen was in front of the net, Carboneau tried to get it to him, it's in front of the scramble, Roberts is there to clear it out. They're at the four minute mark now, the third period. Canadians with some scoring chances. But the Flames get back to cover up in time. Orson is in there, Keane. Couldn't get by the goaltender, Vernon, who had left the net. The puck goes into the crowd in behind uh, Mike Vernon. Well, Stefan Riche has a nightmare in the next couple of nights. It may be about what happened around the three minute mark of this period. Shane Corson with the setup. What a chance, he missed the puck. Didn't make contact at all. Mm. Probably the cleanest chance in the game right there, out the window for Montreal. You know, if he'd gone the net to the net with a stick on the ice, he might have scored that goal. Martinell went in after McCrimmon. McCrimmon got the puck away. Flames get it down for Lanny McDonald, who's charging in there. Wah out of the net. McDonald keeps going. In on Green. Green takes it and gives it to Swoboda. He starts out to Dazzling on his skate. He doesn't move on it. Otto against Swoboda. Otto rolled it ahead. McClellan stopped by Swoboda. Put a pass rink wide though at Portno. Picks it up. Shoots it off the boards behind the net. Canadian Snazlin waits. Now comes up over center. Naslin going to the Calgary line, dropping it to Bobby Smith. He hooked it in there and Lube intercepts. Hook and Lube back for Calgary. Moving in there. Lube, a good play to McCrimmon. Hit the side of the goal. He was in a little too far. Lube made a nice pass. Now Lube again. 
centered it. Oh, the talent put the puck on the post at the far side. Cardinal now ripped one on the net. Vernon stopped it. Canadians are changing as the Flames come back out. Desjardins having to come back. Flurry and Lube go off. Gilmore is on with Mullen again as the Canadians are deep in their own zone. Robinson bumped by Gilmore. Got a pass away though to Claude Lemieux. He has a tough time handling it now up to McPhee. McPhee trying to go in, upended. Here's Gilmore. He's away. Gilmore is Patterson catching up. And Mullen. Patterson coming in. Oh, and Patrick Waugh makes a tough save on that kid by Patterson to score. Only three goals allowed tonight by these fellas who have been stingy. And the big one by Lanny, as Bob mentioned. The difference right now with 2 to 1 on the board for Calgary. Otto got it back to Burrs and his shot. He just missed. Good clean face off by Calgary. Another shot by McKinnis misses. Walter coming to center ice is Stuglin. He rifles one in. Here comes Corson to pick it up. Dumping it to the corner and Burrs is there for Calgary. Skates in front of Mike Vernon coming out. Burrs takes his time, gets the job done near center and shoots it in. Jalios tapped at it. Herdina stopped it. Roberts back at the net. Tried to hold it with a skate. He dropped the stick. Now he boots it loose for Otto. He centered Herdina. Oh, what a save that was by Waugh. A low shot. Everybody thought was going in. Except Patrick Waugh. Picked the left leg out. Horsing in there now. Centered it. That was by everybody down the ice. One man back. Herdina coming in with Flurry. Shooting. And it's blocked by Swoboda. Open up a bit now. Canadians come out. Grabbed at center by Ramage easily. Arbino stopping it, and the play called on the outside. You know, with so many Montreal players seem to have heavy feet tonight, Dick, again, you have to wonder whether the travel agent is playing a hand in this outcome. Again, after the game Tuesday in Calgary, Montreal chartered out, got here very early in the morning. Calgary, five o'clock, by the time they got into their hotel, five o'clock in the morning versus five o'clock in the afternoon when the flames landed, leaving Calgary at noon. Anyone who's taken that red eye knows not only your eyes are red, but your legs are heavy. Calgary, two, Montreal, one. 12.45 left in the third. Swoboda, pass ahead, chopped in by Carbonell. Ramage coming back. Upended. The Flames will get the puck out of the zone to Gilmore. He just plays it into the Canadian zone and goes off. Robinson poked to the head. Ganey gives it to Keane. He shoots it over the Calgary line. Ganey going after it. It's out over the line. Robinson for Green. Back to Robinson. Two Flames up for checking. Calgary's McCrimmon for Newendike. Dyke coming in there, trying to make a stride around Robinson. He centered it, and Roberts came close. Now Canadians, Naslin gets the puck out. Smith is coming in with Riche. Smith coming in, shoots, and he drilled it on the short side, and Vernon was there. It's centered. Ludwig, he tries his shot high. Smith can't stop it, and the Flames get it out of the zone. Lewin Dyke just laid it down the ice. Here's Chelios now. He put it on the boards and goes in after it. Chelios and McCowan bump. They go to the ice. Natris on it. Riche got it away from him. Around the net. Comes out. He tried to center it. It went by Smith. There's Riche again on that line. Now he centers it. Vernon will dive on it. And the goaltender senses the Canadians are coming too close. So he holds it. Harry Crisp, the pacer. Pat Burns stays home for uh, Chris. Here's the chance, Harry, here a minute ago. I wonder whether he could have passed it to Bobby Smith there, but there were a number of people between Smith and the puck that was on Richet's stick. Strudlin got the draw. Swoboda had moved, though. Desjardins shot. Oh, they nice save by Vernon. Kicking out the right leg to stop that. Gilmore lost the stick, but the Flames get it out of the zone, down the ice. 11 minutes left in the third. Still 2-1, to one, Calgary Flames. 
McPhee shoots one from the line, goes after it. McInnes couldn't get it out. Desjardins played it up to Scrooglin. Bumped by Mark Hunter. Lemieux goes in, and they hold it long enough for the referee to call the play. And there will be another face-off of the Calgary zone. 10.51 left in the third. Walter, Riche, Corson. Up there with Swoboda coming in. Tried a shot, it was deflected and missed. Green hustles to keep it in. Canadians are pressing the flames more now at this part of the third period. Battling to try and tie it up. Save off elimination. The Montreal Canadiens have spent most of this final series reacting to the Calgary offense rather than instigating their own. It's only when they get a real wave of panic about losing the game do we see any forechecking? And they're a pretty good forechecking team when they play that way. Shane Corson is one of the forwards for Montreal that scored some big goals all year. He hasn't scored a goal this series. And there are some young ladies from Montreal who haven't given up yet. 10.39 to go. The Calgary Flames are that far away from putting a giant lip lock on the Stanley Cup. Otto will take a lot of the face-offs now in the Calgary zone. And that's nothing new. He's been super at that. Tell you one thing, the home team's been trailing for most of this game, and yet this is a noisy Montreal forum today. Joe Neuendijk has tried it twice, and every time he comes to the bench, they're after him again. Tape, ice, more tape. It's a gutty show he's putting on here trying to finish this game. Ryan Walter for the Canadians, trying to win this face-off. Can't do it against Otto. Otto just poked into the corner at center, and Gilmore was there to set the puck off the boards and down the ice. Perfect weight by Gilmore. Wait for the net. Green on his knees, gets back up, goes around the net. Rick Green. A pass to the left side for Corson. He couldn't handle it. Swoboda. Was starting to go off, had to stay on. He saw the puck come back to him. Now course in the center. Gets it in there. Swoboda does leave now with a shot in on the net. Vernon stopped it, but there's Richet again. Flurry going after it and coming out. Flurry to center. He's up there with Mark Hunter, who could not hang on at the blue line. He's offside. Bob Cole with Harry Neal, Dick Irvin, Chris Cuthbert. Ron McLean, Don Cherry at the Forum in Montreal. And the clock winding down in favor of the Calgary Flames. They are doing a super job protecting a one goal lead in this third period. Bobby Smith shoots it in. A count of the Flames. Natris, the other defenseman. And it's out of the zone again. Jardin comes back with Robinson. Robinson. He has Lube to contend with, turning away from him. Verdina and Roberts are also in there for checking. Now it's Cordno trying to speed away. Shoots the puck from center and it's in. Back at the, oh, Cordno! Ran into the goaltender, Vernon. He's going to get a penalty. He just kept coming and slammed into Vernon. And here's where it takes some discipline. The rest of the Calgary Flames should stay away from him. Vernon is not hurt, and they're going to have a power play of at least two minutes. The flame bench is screaming for five as Cortland ran over Mike Vernon. And he's getting two. And Vernon's all right. Maybe you're all right when the guy Cortland's size runs you over. One of the few guys that's about the same size as Mike. Look at this. Well, I suppose that's that old story. Once a goaltender leaves his crease, he becomes just like every other player as far as that goes. Now, Natras it was, had an inkling to hammer Cortno, but you're right, Harry, he showed the discipline that he needed. Bingo. Well, the whole Calgary bench, the coaches, <laughs> the trainers, are all going to Natras and saying, forget it. Well, he held up. We're 9-14 from the cup, and Vernon's all right. They're calling it boarding. And Cortno in the box. Well, I guarantee if that had been a defenseman, that probably wouldn't be a penalty. 
But the goalie had needs some protection, and he got a two-minute penalty for running over the guy. He usually causes quite a reaction when he gets knocked over, and the Calgary Flames should be commended for it. I know if our buddy Red Story was here and you said the goalie needs protection, he'd come right back like he has to me and say, they're the most padded players on the ice. What do they need protection? Now, Denny Morrell made the call. Now, here is a chance for the Calgary Flames to really put this one away. We've seen how they've staved off the Canadians' attack whenever they got it going to protect a one-goal lead. If they get one here, here's Gilmore coming in. The backhand, a rebound. He scores! Gilmore gets that goal we were just talking about, and it's 3-1. Calgary. Well, the exuberance of Russ Cortnell has cost his team a power play goal. And Pat Burns is applauding Denny Morrell. Of course, he didn't like the call. But Gilmore, with those great hands of his, wrapped it through the legs, out of the air, over the line. It's 3-1 Calgary. You have to wonder if Patrick Waugh couldn't have handled that shot. It wasn't hard. Watch it. Chris Chelios doesn't stay with Gilmore, and Gilmore knocked it out of the air between the legs of Patrick Waugh. And with 8.58, the Calgary Flames are driving spikes now into the coffin of the Montreal Canadiens. 11.02, the time of the goal by Gilmore. And there's the score, Calgary with a huge two-goal lead. goal lead shouldn't sound like a huge lead but the way these two teams can protect leads let's face it it is well the Calgary Flames have given I think the best the team that protected leads the best all season quite a lesson in doing it in this playoff Lemieux comes up there for Montreal passes back it's broken up Mullen trying to dig for it but Ludwig got back Chelio steps in his pass intercepted Here's a pass to Mullen, one man back. Mullen shot. Ross saved it. And Ludwig lays it out over the line. Scrooglin coming over center. He's in with McPhee. Laid it off the board for Lemieux with McPhee. He's centered it now. Green gets set. Shoots. Scores! Green! You'll never know. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mike Vernon screaming that he was interfered with on the low point shot from about 55 feet out by Rick Green. He's not known to have a great shot, but it proves that you put it where you want it, sometimes it goes in. Now watch all the people this puck goes through. I think it tipped somebody, and Vernon streaming that the Montreal player, we'll see it in a minute, Claude Lemieux interfered with him, and he did. He knocked him down with one hand as the puck was going by him. Yes, he did. Right there. He puts his foot behind Vernon's skate and kicks his feet out from under him. And with 8.07 to go, the Montreal Canadiens are trying to pry the coffin door open. 11.53. The time of the goal. I haven't heard it exactly like that before. But you're right, Harry. They were almost buried. And Green got that shot from the blue line. And Pat Burns is trying to get some more stuff going. Green scored his last playoff goal three years ago tonight. Anniversary of sorts. He's done it again. He scores every three years whether they need the goal or not. Morrison shoots it in. But Kremen on the boards trying to get it out. Is Lou, but he does. Vogue, Lemieux, and McPhee assisted on the goal, scored by Green to make it 3-2. to two. Up the center is Riche, trying to go in. He is in, and he couldn't get a shot. He skated through everybody. Here's the centering pass. Carbono, and that was blocked. Riche, Nick Vernon has it, and he hangs on to it. Vernon comes out, and he is really upset as Corson was in there in the crease area. <laughs> Green had another great chance. 7.22 left. Well, Mike Vernon upset that last sequence with Shane Corson ending up in his gold crease. There he goes down. 
Corson hammers Ramage, and then Roberts drills Corson. <laughs> and Vernon goes after Morrell, and all kinds of things are happening. We've got a couple of unruly fans thrown out. And the crowd, gee, is this something here? So it's quite a finish to this game through the last 7.22. It is deafening in the forum now as Walter squares off with Gilmore to the left of Vernon. Deep in the count, rezone. It comes to Patterson. He got it to Mullen and it's out. Robinson shoots it in. It bounced through Vernon behind the net. Here comes Court to the center. It was on the skate of Walter. And he couldn't hold it. There's going to be another face off inside the Calgary line to the left of Vernon again. I wonder if Terry Crisp would call another one of those timely timeouts she called here in game number four. When he calmed his team down because there is a degree of panic running through the Calgary Flames. And the 30-second timeout can easily be transported into a minute, and he's doing he's just that. Right on, Harry. He's now got he's, it. He's going to look at his pad and find the same speech he gave the last time he was in Montreal. This is a good coaching move, and his team should show these good effects of it. Well, this guy's hair is the same color as his sweater. This is deafening in here. I hope the folks down the way can hear Bob and Harry and the rest of us. That Montreal fan had all blue hair, and in this game, half of them has turned gray. <laughs> they settle back, or do they? 17,909 of them. There's the time left. There's the score. One goal separating these two in the sixth game of the Stanley Cup Final. Patterson is coming out across center. Has a little bit of room as he tries to go in around Desjardins. Can't do it. Now Al McKenna steps in. Desjardins to Walter. Walter forced back. He leaves it for the defenseman Desjardins to Robinson. Robinson the veteran to Cardinal, the speedster. He poked it up to Smith. But Pellin was there to clear it. 6.40 left in the third. Naslin for Bobby Smith. Right side is Cortno dropping it. Chelios in front. Vernon comes out, put it high into the corner. It'll be Otto to bring it out for Calgary with Lanny McDonald at the line and shooting it in. Waugh stopping it for Chelios. Long pass to Bobby Smith. Here's Naslin on the move. Naslin coming in. Turning around at the blue line. And had it knocked away by Natris. Naslin again. He has to wait for Smith to come out. And he put it onto the stick of McCown, who slides it ahead. Here's Bobby Smith coming in. Smith going for the net is Lemieux. Roof for the crease. Naslin again. Up behind the goal. Ludwig picks it up and centered it. Here's Jelio. And Naslin took it away from his shot. And it's dumped out. Herdina on the puck, coming in. Herdina, that pass stopped by Ludwig. Herdina on it again, knocked to the ice by Lemieux. Into the corner, they're trying to get a whistle. And they do. There will be a face-off at the Montreal zone. 529 remaining in regulation time. Herdina proving his value by being able to jump in and play center ice for Joe Neuendijk. Dyke has tried to play, but his hand or wrist won't allow him to play the way he usually does. And when you have a guy who's played wing all night and spent six games in the Stanley Cup playoffs, can jump in and do a job at center. One of the reasons why you're sitting where the Flames are right now. Face off to the left of Roy. Doug Gilmore. Calgary got the face off, but Riche was there before Mullen could get to it. Up to Scoogland to McPhee on the line. But the goaltender, Vernon, gets it up across his own line, and Svoboda now has to come back. Trying to get away from Patterson, he does. Deep play for Scoogland, his long shot. Coming after it is McPhee. Tapped it behind the net for Riche. Riche trying to come out front. Centered it, nobody there but Patterson. And he just got rid of it. Waugh deciding whether he should come out or not. He decides that he should. Green getting back against Mullen. Now pass just over the stick of McClellan. 
Up to center is McPhee. He's bodied on the play. Flames get it in. Here's Carbono intercepting with Riche and McPhee. Riche takes it. Goes in. Lost it inside the line. Out comes Mark Hunter. Hunter down the right wing against Robinson. Robinson trying to play the body. Holding him now along the boards. Robinson got a skate on it. Hooked it away. And McPhee. Still on there with Portman now to center. Make the shot. Courtney going in. Could get a drive. Canadians on it though. It's Courtney in the corner, centering it. And covering up was Al McKinnon. And he hangs on to it with 4 9 remaining in the third period. And a 3-2 game in favor of the Calgary Flames. The Canadians got a very large break when the puck being cleared out by the Flames hit Denny Morrell. And then but the Flames got a break back when this fella here put his hand on the puck. But Danny Morell is trying hard not to be the influencing factor in this game. But watch this. Oh, Danny Morell's on the other side of it. He may not have had the look we did at it. There's McKinnis gathering it in and holding it. Turned out to be a big play for the Calgary Flames with the Canadians buzzing around inside the line in an effort to tie it up. Calgary, 4-0-9 away from their first Stanley Cup. Canadians official box seat area with the President Ronald Corey, hand up to the chin. And no doubt wherever he is in this building, Flames President Cook Fletcher is equally as tense. The heart rates of both those gentlemen are right at the top of the scale. One for one reason and one for the other. Carbono against Gilmore. And it's kicked back by Carbono. There's Carbono. He took a whack at it and missed it. Flames get it out. Stopped by Ludwig near center. He shoot it in. Back to the net is Al McKinnis. Stopping, moving away from Corson. Just shovels the puck on the boards and gets it out. Ludwig to Courtnall. He dropped it. Ludwig picked it up, shot it back in. Smith is on the boards against Gilmore. Gilmore going the other way and Mullen has a chance to move it out. He hooked the high one into center ice. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in the third. Jalios comes in, pushes the puck into the corner. McCown back there. Corson was upended, the fans wanted a penalty, but it's McCown coming in, McCown stopping. He just backhands it in for Roberts in the corner and Chelios took it away from him. Chelios made it out in front of the net, Corson is turning back the goal. Chelios, three minutes left in the third, pass near center is stopped. Walter was on the ice and Riche now joins him, circle. Riche has that big shot, he can get loose, tries to go in, nearly got around Natras. Now he centers it. It'll come back to Green at the point. He doesn't shoot it. Walter going back to the goal with Swoboda trying to center it. Swoboda to Walter, to Swoboda. Swoboda ripped the shot, and the Calgary Flames will clear it with two and a half minutes left. Here's McClellan coming in, and Herdina, and he misses the far side. Mark Hunter has it. He gets away from Larry Robinson. Hunter on the boards. 2.20 remaining in the third period. Both teams have to be feeling dog tired, but you never know it the way they're going. Lemieux plays it in. There goes McPhee. McPhee bump. Tried to get the puck back to Scrudlin. He kicked it to him. Scrudlin stopped, but he now centers it. Lemieux goes back to the goal. Here's Desjardins keeping it in. Gilmore missed it. Lemieux in on the boards against McCrimmon with 150 remaining in the third. The Canadians fighting for it and McCrimmon fell on it and the play is stopped. For a face off of the Calgary zone and we look at the clock now as is everybody else in this building. The Montreal Canadiens have taken a timeout. Calgary of course has already burned theirs up with 144 left. Lanny McDonald, you wonder if this is his final game. Boy, if it is, it's a beauty. When a superstar like Lanny is forced to quit, 
the sport that is both his occupation and his preoccupation, they really die twice. Once when that happens, and second, like the rest of us, when you stop breathing. Lanny McDonald may be playing his last game in the National Hockey League tonight should the Calgary Flames win it. Roy is over near the Canadian's bench as you look at the last sequence, and Patrick Roy is going to leave at this point. Well, with a minute 44, that's a long time to keep the intensity necessary to not allow a team out of their own end. And that's why coaches usually wait till there's a minute to go. No, he's sending him yeah. back. <laughs> he heard you, Harry. He's that, got... yeah. That's too long. He'll be over there, but not for about 45 seconds. Now they gotta get somebody off the edge. He won't go very far. He's staying now about 30, 35 feet out in front of the net. There he is, ready to go, just in case the Canadians control on the faceoff. So I think Pat Burns is ready to put the extra skater on. Don't forget Joel Otto's hand sore, he can't take the draw. Joel Neuendijk's hand sore, he can't. You're looking at Doug Gilmore. He's gotta take them all now. If I was Montreal, I'd try to get him thrown out. All right, Scrudlin, Robinson, Lemieux, McBee, Chelios inside the line. Patrick Waugh about 15 feet inside his own blue line. The Flames will clear the zone. So Waugh will ease back. Chelios coming back. 135 remaining in the third period. Coming out is McPhee. Charging the center. Charging to the net. With the shot, the rebound, Lemieux. And it's called back at the line. And Lemieux runs the goaltender over. Now, if he takes the penalty at this time, he won't make it to the Montreal bench. This one wasn't quite as blatant, but there was no attempt by Lemieux at all to change his course to avoid Vernon. And because the rebound had come out, the whistle had gone on the offside, but just as Lemieux got to the net. Yeah, Morrell, is he gonna backpedal all the way to the penalty box? I think he's sending two of them off. He seemed to be motioning Al McKinnis. Toward McKinnis. I thought so, Bob. Hard to tell, there were a lot of players standing there. But Lemieux is gone. That's a tough pill for Calgary to swallow. Yeah. Nobody ta attacked Lemieux after the collision. Now you watch here and tell me, 32 Lemieux, they, it's offside now. And you can see that uh, there's the penalty McKinnis gets after Lemieux knocks the goalie over. I've often thought, you know, in that kind of a case where it looked to me like Lemieux made no attempt not to knock him over, but that guy ought to get four, and then the guy that comes in to save his goalie, too. The referee doesn't want to decide this game, and he's bending over backwards to do just that. And if you ask either coach before the third period, would you like him to follow that tack, they'd all agree with Morales move. Raw comes out of the net again and is parked inside his home blue line. Pat Burns anticipating a Canadian winning the faceoff and getting the puck into the Calgary zone. If that is the case, I'm sure Waugh will head for the bench. But Mullen gets it down the ice, so Waugh has to get back in. He leaves it there for Robinson, 115 remaining in the third period. Hortnall coming to center. Passes into Robinson, he stopped at the Calgary line. The net is empty down there for Mullen and for Gilmore. Gilmore has a shot to win it all here. He scores! Gilmore scores! With 103 left, Gilmore and Calgary leads four to two. Five seconds after Patrick Roy got to the Montreal bench, the puck went into his unguarded net, and the Flames are ahead by two. And Doug Gilmore, who's been the biggest and sharpest storm in the side of the Montreal Canadiens, so deservedly so, gets a chance to bury the Canadian, and here it is right here. See, now Montreal didn't get the puck inside the blue line, and Roy had already gone to the bench. They did not get the puck inside Calgary territory. Sharp angle, good shot. And Gilmore, who has in the last three games or so of this series, has just played tremendous hockey. Pretty well puts the capper on some history in Calgary. We've got cameras out in Calgary in the streets of the city, so we are going to, at the end of this, all things 
being normal from now for the next 63 seconds of this hockey season. Show you what's going on back home where the Flames come from. And we'll be returning to Hope the gentlemen have their helmets on fully. They're gonna need them. 18.57 was the time of that goal. And she's about to wind down. 45 seconds, make that 46 remaining as the puck is shot into the crowd. Calgary, 46 seconds away, Terry Chris, from a Stanley Cup. And you know, you can say that Calgary had some luck. It was a funny first goal, a funny third goal, but a good luck is hard to detect because it always looks like so much like something you've earned. And the Calgary Flames have earned the Stanley Cup that they're gonna win, 46 playing seconds away from right now. They have surely demonstrated all season and in this series and in this game tonight that they are indeed worthy Stanley Cup champions. A solid hockey team. Horton comes in with 30 seconds left, and Sloboda trying to go for the net. Wall on the bench again. The puck is cleared to center ice. And Bobby Smith takes it, but the net is off the magnets again, and behind Mike Vernon. And they stop the play, of course. Wall on the bench. You know, championship teams all have one characteristic, and that is they have more players than other teams that put selfishness individual notoriety and personality clashes aside in order to win. And the Calgary Flames are going to be the last Stanley Cup winners of the 1980s. And this is the first time since 1983 that the Stanley Cup has not been won in the province of Alberta by somebody. <laughs> Patrick Waugh now eases back into the Montreal net. This one is all but done. It's just 25 seconds away from being done. Calgary leading, four to two. It takes nearly a lifetime for many hockey players to reach the ultimate. For many more, even a lifetime is not enough. But for these Calgary Flames, all these hockey players, coaches, management, they've made it. Calgary Flames, 1989. Stanley Cup champions. Just five seconds will prove it. If the play is called in an icer. <laughs> and they'll bring it all the way back, and the Flames are celebrating now. Why not? Well, you know, winning the Cup, it's one thing to chase your dream. It's quite another to catch it. The Stanley Cup, of course, is the dream of every young player in Canada. And this May 25th of 1989, the Calgary Flames have captured their lifelong dream. And only the guys that win it know that inside feeling of euphoria. So many have missed. Here comes the siren. Here come the Flames. Champions. 1989. A Stanley Cup has been won by Calgary. now, Terry Crisp and Pat Burns. I don't think there's any reason for tears on the part of Montreal. This is the 15th time in the Montreal Forum's history that the Stanley Cup has been won in this building. The 12th time the Canadians have been involved in the game, and only the first time that they have lost the Cup to their opposition here in Montreal. 
They've won it on the road a lot. The only two buildings in which they have lost it prior to this in the last 65 years have been the Detroit Olympia and Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The Montreal Maroons lost one here, won a couple. And there, Bob Ganey. And you have to wonder, is this our last hockey night in Canada shot of the Canadians number 23? And likewise, the Flames, great number nine, Lanny McDonald. He's got to write another chapter in that book of his after this goal tonight and the win. Well, going through the playoffs and not having a goal scored and saving it for tonight, he couldn't have planned it any better. Lanny McDonald, well done. There's always a lot of asides to the stories, but halfway through the third period, they froze Joe Neuendijk's hand on the Calgary bench so he could finish with one hand. And it's that kind of dedication and that kind of nerve that allows you to take a sip out of the $50 trophy. The president of the National Hockey League, John Ziegler, Jr., is at center ice. So is this, what it's all about, Calgary's for 89, Stanley Cup. Well, they're the best team. They were the best team, Harry, in the series. They won the league regular season championship. Here's the announcement now of the presentation. Al McKinnis. Al McKinnis has won the Conn Smythe Trophy. Well deserved. boy, Al. One of the most impressive things about the Stanley Cup, there's not a fan on the ice, Dick. There was one, but he was quickly removed. And uh -huh. there's hardly any fans have left. This is quite a tribute to the Flames here at the Forum in Montreal. And quite a win. Harry, that's a good hockey team. Indeed. A terrific hockey team. You know, and I think that, you know, there's only been three teams win the Stanley Cup in the last 13 years. And every guy on those three teams tell you the first one's the toughest one. Maybe we're going to see the Flames do this again in the next four or five years. Well, Lanny has asked for the other two captains. They have alternated with the C's and the A's, but Lanny McDonald, along with Tim Hunter and Jim Poplinski, accept the Stanley Cup from league president John Ziegler. Cliff Fletcher ushered onto the ice by his coach, Terry Crisp, and a big night for Cliff Fletcher. Another well-deserved honor, we might say. He has done a tremendous job. It's a completely classy organization from top to bottom, all the way through. Cliff Fletcher. Here is what every hockey player dreams about. The dream has come true for the Calgary Flames. This is one parade, Harry and Dick. I'm gonna make a bet with you. There's one a little bigger coming up in Calgary. This is the shortest lap any hockey player has ever had to take in a hockey game. following a recent tradition among Stanley Cup winning teams, allowing almost everybody, if they can, to get a hold of the cup as they make the victory lap. Long way for Cliff Fletcher from the times that he used to stand in the snowbanks at NDG here in Montreal and scout young hockey players for the Canadians. And he started out in the business. Nick, there's another man down there who was instrumental in building, helping to build this Calgary Flames hockey team. He's very close to Mr. Fletcher there now, and that's Alistair McNeil. Right. He was on the winning end of it 
in 71 when he coached the Canadians. Here's this scene that was started by Wayne and the Oilers last year with the cup picture being taken before they leave the ice. You've done it, Lanny. Uh, You've done it. It takes a lot of people to win the Stanley Cup, and don't forget that hard-working scouting staff and front office staff, secretaries, etc. home in Calgary or all over the country where the scouts are. They're equally pleased and proud, and so they should be. This is their 17th year in the NHL as the Flames. They've been in the playoffs 15 of the 17 years. They spent their first eight years in the league in Atlanta. Cliff Fletcher has been the only general manager in the team's history. So what a moment this is for him, having been in on it since day one. 